So uh, let me let me welcome Angela now. Well, my name is Isangela Dolmes from Colombia. I also joined this fabulous group in, in Norway. I was part of this group, and I can I have to say that uh, this example has been a source of inspiration for me. But I am more more than a theoretical person. I think I've been more of a doer. So I, ever since I started working on the idea of having a, a group of women uh, somehow working into what it, be, it became later uh, an eco village built on material values. Um, I am going to I am going to show you a video. I'm just going to read a little bit before, and I, I think my presentation will take more than ten minutes. Sarah Rudy's essays on maternal thinking and Jane Vaughan's gift economy inspired the philosophical justification for the Nigerian village. Rudy suggests that women have developed a distinct kind of maternal thinking as a consequence of specific maternal practices which concern the well-being of the child, they are first to preserve it, second to fortress its physical, emotional, and intellectual growth, and thirdly to ensure its social acceptability. Sarah Rudy aims at a society where material values will not only be an attribute of women, but where men will eventually learn maternal values. Jane Vaughan gives culture, quote, the gift culture challenges the core and the pinning of the global market and the development project, which are built on extraction and concentration of wealth and power and the spread of monoculture. The gift culture doesn't mean that there are no markets but rather we need to recreate a healthy set of cultural, spiritual, and social values and rituals to limit the space, control of the markets, and in our lives and relationship, a true sense of the sacred. Most important, the gift culture is the key to sustainable living and real happiness in, on the planet. The practice of mothering takes place in societies in which women of all Classes have less power than men of the class to determine the conditions under which the children grow. Throughout history, most women have mothered in conditions of military and social violence, and often in extreme poverty. This is the case in Colombia. The ethic of care theory argues that there is a particular way in which women think, react, and solve problems which distinguish them from men. Women's common experience as mothers and caregivers develops in them a distinctive set of values that, if introduced into the public sphere, can have transforming implications both for the content and for the conduct of social life. This theory argues, for instance, that women have a particular contribution to make to the cause of peace. Women's development delineates a path of maturity to independence and care that results in a relation of violence. These characteristics in the political philosophy of Carol Gilligan define the difference between an ethic of care, a woman's trait, and an ethic of justice, a man's trait. While an ethic of justice proceeds from the premise of equality, that everyone should be treated the same, an ethic of care rests on the premise of nonviolence, that no one should be hurt. The ethic of care hypothesis thus argues that women conduct their daily life in a dramatically different way than men. Gilligan concludes by saying that listening to women and bringing in women's life experiences changes both psychology and history. And we have listened to, for centuries to the voices of men and the theories of development that their experiences informs. So we have come more recently to notice, not only in the silence of women, but the difficulty in hearing what they say when they speak. Yet, the different voices of women lies the truth of an ethic of care, the tie between relationship and responsibility, and the origins of aggression in the failure of connection. The nurturing qualities and the instinctive imperative to preserve life, it is argued, give women a unique perspective that to make, could make them particularly qualified to nurture a society away from violence. Current behavioral and social analysis suggest that there is indeed a particular way in which women think, react, and solve problems that are related to the moral instincts and feelings. Based on the above premises, the Nachira village was conceived as a way of healing the wounds caused by many years of war, displacement, and violence in Colombia. Before you see the video, I must tell you that these houses are free. Nobody has to pay a cent for them. They receive them 
they put the, the women of Nachira have uh, uh, put uh, the their work, the work on building the houses. But basically, there is no debt, no debt to any bank. The houses, the, the moment they receive the houses, which we hope it will be, be it will be within the next three months, um, they is completely free. So now I show you the video. and wormeries to provide organic feed for poultry and fish. Four African sheep are in charge of keeping the grass short. The women are organized into 11 production groups specializing in activities such as citrus fruit production, plantain growing and production of plantain chips, quail eggs, chicken rearing, the sale of value-added non-food products, Manufacturing of ceramic a solar restaurant, and eco trees in the world. They hold the market on the first weekend of every month to sell the products and strengthen a solidarity economy with their own regional complementary money, Nashiras, which circulate within the community but are exchangeable at par for the local currency. Nashira share their knowledge about making arts and handicrafts from recycled paper, glass, and plastic. The most important part of the Nashira project is the building of 88 environmentally friendly houses. An extra room for paying guests will generate a small additional income for the families. The wastewater system is particularly important as it uses natural disposal technology. Sewage treatment is via a system of filters leading to a wetland area where helicopters and bamboo are growing. Rainwater collected from the roofs will be used for watering the vegetable gardens. of houses participates in an agricultural business project so that each family can earn an income to at least partially meet their economic needs. There will also be buildings for use as workshops and warehouses. So far, the consolidated group has built with their own hands 41 housing units which use environmentally friendly materials and are nearly ready for occupation. One of the landmarks of the Eco Village is a composted toilet. The basic structure was built from recycled plastic water bottles filled with sand. The bottles were collected by the women of Bashira during one of the peace marches to Colombia. Recycled tires were incorporated as stairs, and the roof was made with prefabricated tiles made with recycled construction and industrial waste. Another ecological innovation is the solar restaurant. A parabolic stove and a solar oven have been in use for the last year. The solar restaurant will be completed by the end of October and will begin operation by Christmas. The tableware is being made in a ceramic kiln where traditional methods of making ceramics are used. International artist and recreational environment is being built through the Eco Village. The women built with broken tiles the round floor of the theater Angora. The canvas roofing was made by them. On a big sheet of canvas, the women have drawn an outline of their own bodies and, according to their feelings, placed text or drawings on their hearts, hands, and legs. There will also be exercise bicycles to generate electricity and a labyrinth made with plants. Building the children playground is now in progress. <laughs> the social and environmental work of this group of women based on motherly values is most inspiring. Decisions are taken by consensus and the task of cleaning, looking after the children, and maintaining the eco-village of Donald Mingas or collective work. 
students of psychology and social work accompany the social process permanently. By applying motherly values in their daily lives, the women of the Shura have developed a unique project where generosity, solidarity, and motherly love will generate a happy and sustainable community. <laughs> something which I think it might sound outrageous. At this stage, the women of Nachira are ready to be introduced to the gift economy. They know to give, but have to learn to spend little in return. This, the test will be when the first 41 houses are occupied and an internal economy using only Nachira is set in place. 60% of the basic needs of food will be met and Nachira village already ecological and sustainable, will be a living model of a community where the gift economy is being developed. In the midst of this sugarcane monoculture industry, this pilot project will be an outbreak of market economy. We hope to be followed by many more in the world. 